Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to be taking this engine down to the bare block, stripping everything off and then getting it ready for machining and rebuilding. I'm going to be doing everything to the Toyota factory service manual. So this is what Toyota recommends, how they say to build engines, how this thing was originally built from factories. So we're going to stick to all the regulations for pulling this thing apart. I'm going to be explaining the different type of sensors on here and the easiest way to get them off. So first up we're going to remove the cylinder head covers. There are 12 bolts on these and 4 nuts and then once they're all undone we're just going to get the head covers off and the gaskets as well. I've just wedged a spanner in between these two flywheel bolts to try to get this crank pulley off and I used this massive breaker bar and then I was like shit this isn't working. Hit it with some WD-40 and then I got like a bigger breaker bar on it and I still couldn't get it. So I kind of gave up on filming until I got this thing off. Tried everything, eventually got it off though. So this pulley was like stuck on there. I did have to end up prying it off, but you know, gotta do what you gotta do. If you're planning to reuse your timing belt, make sure you draw an arrow in the clockwise direction so you put it on in the same direction as you took it off. Inspect your belt for any cracks or any frays and replace it if it has it. And store this in a dry place without oil or dust. Now we're just gonna remove the timing belt tensioner and the water pump assembly as well. Just removing the exhaust cam by undoing this nut in the center. This is the oil pipe that runs to your camshaft timing oil control valve. There's a little filter on the end. You want to make sure you give that a good clean and look after it. Don't lose it. This is your oil control valve solenoid and it pretty much regulates oil pressure to the camshaft, either advancing your timing or decreasing the timing. I didn't have the right size allen key for this screw plug so I kind of made up a tool where I added a bolt and then a lock nut onto the end of it and then turned the lock nut and it seemed to, you know, break it free. If there is a will, there is a way. There is only one bolt in the middle which will actually remove this gear. Those 10mm bolts will, you know, break the gear apart and you don't want to do that so just keep it all in one piece. There is a few 5mm hexagon wrench nuts on these and then four camshaft bearing cap bolts as well to remove to get these cams off. Make sure you don't damage these with your screwdriver if you're going to pry them off and look after these oil seals as well if you're going to reuse them. Make sure you remove these cam bolts in like several passes and work from the outside in because some of these cam lobes are still pushing on valve springs and they can actually spring up and snap in half if you're not careful and don't take your time with this part. 2J builds are already pretty expensive so trust me you don't want to be replacing another camshaft if you accidentally break one. Next we're just removing the exhaust cam and then we're going to be removing the intake cam as well. Make sure you label your shims so you know where to put them back in the exact same spot when you're putting all of this back together. This was an absolute struggle for my week. I was trying to crack these head bolts, but hopefully it's not too bad for you. You want to make sure you work from the outside in, slowly loosening these. Once you crack them, you can hit them with the rattle gun, but yeah, make sure you do it by hand first. I'm going to be doing an NAT build on this engine so this head gasket is going straight in the bin and we're going to be replacing it with a GTE gasket to change our compression ratio. I'm just using a little bit of scotch bright here just to remove that carbon build up around the top of the cylinders so when it comes time to take the pistons out they're not going to get stuck on the way out. I know a lot of you guys are going to get triggered that I'm using chromies on the impact but that is literally all I had so call the cops, I don't care. Anyway, we're taking off the oil pan and the baffle plate and this pickup strainer thing. 
make sure you get all the gasket goo off this stuff and just keep it nice and clean. Next we're going to be taking off the main oil pan. I believe there is 16 bolts on this one. They are all hidden in little spots so go hunting, get that thing off. Now onto the exciting stuff, we're going to be taking off the connecting rod caps. I'm always cracking these by hand and then I'll just hit them with a rattle gun later. Just check these bearings, you know, obviously you should always replace your bearings if you're rebuilding an engine, but these honestly looked pretty good, I won't lie, for an engine that's got nearly 200Ks on it. Anyway, so I'm just getting these loose one by one and then pulling those caps off, labelling them and keeping them in an organised space as well. I just give the little pistons a little, you know, little knock on the top with a socket and they just usually pop straight out. This one was still full of oil. My bad. I forgot to drain it. That's all right. We love a big mess. Definitely recommend using a pulley to get this off. Um, my one was quite like rusted on and stuck, so definitely needed this to get it off. It makes it a lot easier. As you can see, there's a bit of spot rust there. There's also these little pry points around the oil pump, which you can actually use to pry the pump off without damaging anything. So look for those, you'll see them on there. It just looks like a spot where you could put a flathead screwdriver in. But yeah, got the oil pump off. Now we're just gonna crack the main caps by hand and then I'm just using a rattle gun to get the bolt the rest of the way out just to save some time. Make sure you check over your bearings for any like pits or scratches and then you want to check your crankshaft as well. If you find you run into these issues, definitely replace your bearings and get your like crank machined and polished again because yeah, that is not good. So we finally got the crank out. Everything is disassembled. It is looking crazy in there. I, I'm just so excited to finally build this thing. It really just made my day. We've got everything super organized and labeled. If I decide to use the parts, I know exactly where they need to go. But this engine had 200 Ks in it and every single part is like, looks almost brand new. It's crazy. Apart from a few bearings, this thing is like mint. Thank you guys for watching. In the next part, we're gonna be rebuilding this whole engine. I'm gonna be using some of these parts as well, plus a bunch of new parts that I've got for this engine, but it's gonna be epic. So stay tuned. See ya.